So if you see my last video, you know I got in a wreck with a deer with uh, my ranger. Uh, I had planned to keep that ranger for at least another year. Uh, or at least, um, probably even longer. But uh, given we have a long uh, trip planned in December, every year we head from Seattle to Los Angeles for a couple weeks. And the fact that the repair is going to take at least about a month. Uh, that means I'm not going to have my ranger potentially for that trip at the end of December. And I wouldn't have it for a month during kind of uh, winter here in Seattle. Uh, it's pretty rare we get snow, but the idea of not having a vehicle that has all-wheel drive or four-wheel drive or just won't be able to handle a surprise winter storm is just not something I would want to deal with. So just with all the part shortages and all that stuff, um, it kind of pushed me to kind of push up my timeline and I decided to start looking at a new vehicle sooner rather than later. So here are the five reasons though that I won't be getting another Ranger. I'm going to be moving to a different vehicle. Uh, make sure to like, subscribe. In the next couple of weeks I'll have a video on uh, what vehicle I moved to and why I chose that. But this video specifically is why I'm selling my Ranger and why um, I'm not just getting another Ranger. So uh, this is in uh, no particular order. It's just um, off the top of my mind the five reasons I went with. So let me get my glasses here. Um, the first reason uh, or that I would be getting rid of the Ranger is I'd, I've kind of I'm never really been happy with the back seat storage. If you've seen the back seat of the Ranger, the seat folds up. There's a big hump under the seat, so the floor actually comes up to the bottom of the seat, and then there's um, the hump that goes down to the floor level where the passengers' feet go. And under the seat, when it folds up, there's two tiny storage compartments. They're about the size of a shoebox on each side. So you have about two uh, shoe boxes of storage, maybe a little bit smaller than a, a average shoe box. And that's it. Uh, when the seat is up, it also kind of protrudes out fairly far and you can't really fit anything there. So it doesn't really work as additional storage when you have the seat up. It just gives you access to those compartments. Uh, there's been several times, so I carry a lot of camera gear when we travel and electronics. Um, I have three laptops, actually probably four now because uh, just a couple I need for work and a couple I have for personal usage. Uh, so we have a lot of electronics that I don't like throwing the electronics into the back of the bed, even with the tonneau cover. So those have to go in the cab. And if we have the dog, that means that the dog, um, the dog can't sit on the floor obviously because it's not flat. Uh, and she's a Rottweiler, even though she is kind of small, she uh, definitely won't fit kind of in the foot area of the back seat. So she's on the seat kind of, we have a dog hammock that goes up the sides. She's on the seat and half of the back seat is taken up by um, a box of like fragile things that we don't store in the back of, under the tonneau cover and the other half is taken up to, by the dog and it's kind of a little bit cramped for her um, and it, it's just not ideal and there also isn't that 60 40 split so even if we could put things on the floor um, the whole seat has to go up so we couldn't just put half the seat down for someone to sit and then possibly the dog on the floor or maybe put the dog on the seat and put some boxes on the floor uh, there's just no split in the seat so that's been the thing that's kind of been the most frustrating part about the Ranger. I didn't have a dog at the time that we bought the Ranger. And honestly, given I, my previous truck was a early 90s Nissan that didn't even have a backseat, I hadn't put a lot of thought into the backseat usage of a, a truck. So now that I've had this kind of real life experience with the truck, uh, I know that ideally I would want a load flat floor and something with a 60-40 split so that somebody can sit in one of the seats and the dog can sit on the floor. Or the dog can be on the floor and we can put boxes uh, or luggage on the floor as well uh, with her and she would just have more room. So I was looking for a little bit more back seat room uh, for those reasons. Uh, the second reason is uh, the gas mileage isn't that much better on the Ranger or a lot of mid-sized trucks than uh, full-size trucks now, especially with things like the PowerBoost uh, F-150, which is getting 24 miles per gallon city, 24 miles per gallon highway, and uh, the combined MPG is 24 miles per gallon. Uh, that beats kind of what I'm getting right now with the Ranger. I'm around 18 city and 22 highway. And that reflects a lot of like uh, experiences I've heard from other people with the Ranger. Uh, very few people are getting the uh, advertised MPG with the Ranger. And the same thing goes with like pretty much everything else in the midsize uh, segment. For whatever reason, the midsize segment doesn't really get that much better gas mileage when compared to uh, full size trucks. Uh, so that was one of the primary reasons I went with um, the Ranger in the first place is because I do care about MPG, uh, but that just hasn't really uh, worked out to be um, 
a big benefit of a missile truck. In addition to that, the Ranger has, I think it was about 18 gallon fuel tank and we get about 340 to 360 miles per gallon when we're traveling cross country, uh, which isn't horrible, but it's just not, um, it's not the best. Uh, my previous cars, I would get over 400 pretty easily, uh, even getting closer to 450. And those are with like a WRX. Uh, so especially when we go on these long distance trips, when we go to LA, that means we're filling up about three times. Uh, larger full-size trucks, a lot of times, if I were to move up to that, I would definitely get like an extended tank or something. I, I really want to beat that 400 um, uh, miles per tank uh, range. Uh, going on with that kind of when we're towing we're not towing anymore we don't have a trailer but when we were towing we were only getting about uh, 140 miles before we had to find um, a place to fill up uh, i don't anticipate we'll be towing anytime soon but if we did uh, i really want to get more than 140 miles uh, per tank so yeah mpg is not that much better than a full-size truck uh, number three this is specific for the ranger not just full-size trucks um, I do feel like there's like a lack of thoughtfulness with the Ranger. Uh, you, it's not something you notice right when you get into it, but it's just something you notice when you live with it for a while. Um, the Ranger had been around for a couple of years in other countries and in, in the international market. And uh, once you live with the Ranger a little bit, you kind of can get that feel that it's uh, maybe like a 2014 truck that Ford brought over, kind of checked a couple boxes to make it competitive on paper with other vehicles. And um, it wasn't really like a from the ground up redesign that uh, was designed for the American market and uh, the current competition. So when I mentioned that, there's just a, a general lack of thoughtfulness. Uh, a very common thing I, I bring up is just, I'll put an image up here, but around the key at the ignition, they don't even put a piece of plastic uh, finishing there. It's just empty. People 3D print things that you can snap in there. There's no reason that they would, should have skipped that. It was a couple penny part, and uh, it definitely is capable of taking that, but they just don't do it for whatever reason. And that kind of little tiny issues exist throughout the truck. Um, I mentioned in my original video, the ergonomics are not great, uh, especially along drives. There's just not a great place to put your arms. Um, the seats are nice, but they're not the most comfortable. Uh, comfortable. Um, and going along with that thoughtfulness I mentioned in the previous videos, but the, the whole towing situation with the Ranger is kind of a mess. If you want to put an aftermarket uh, brake controller, then you lose some of the emergency braking features and you don't get like the full um, suite of safety features that come with the Ranger. Uh, there's many threads on this. If you just want to look it up, just search uh, 2019 or 2020, whatever year of the new Ranger uh, brake controller. Uh, there's one from Ford. And installing that, compared to regular brake controllers, it's really not a complicated job and many people can do it. But with the Ford one, the way they have this set up, you actually have to remove the headliner and wire the brake controller into the over the cab uh, brake light to get uh, certain sig brake signals uh, for the Ford OEM brake controller. So you pretty much have to tear apart your whole cab just to add a brake controller. And Ford's thing is actually just uh, hacked together aftermarket brake controller that they added an additional module to. So it's something like that. And this didn't ship with the truck. It was about a year and a half later that Ford finally got around to adding this brake controller and even the final solution is not really a polished product. Um, that just was reflective of this whole thing like I mentioned before that it's just a truck they brought over and it just wasn't fully thought through. Uh, and there's so many threads on this kind of brake controller thing. It's just very representative of this issue. I'm not saying it's a bad truck, but it's just, um, just yeah, that lack of thoughtfulness. Uh, the fourth reason I'm not moving to another Ranger is storage space. So uh, there's been a couple of times we filled up the bed uh, completely full and we had to leave things. Uh, mostly when we're moving things from Seattle to um, Los Angeles, we usually bring a lot of boxes back and forth and uh, we always end up having to leave things. Uh, it's always very close, so we don't need that much more space, but, um, I think even a five and a half foot bed on a full size would be, um, sufficient for us. Uh, I do like the shorter beds cause it makes it easier to park, but I just need a tiny bit more space in the back there. And this goes along with the back seat storage as well. So 
Going back to the first thing, if the back seat was a little bit bigger, I can store more things in there, especially if the back seat situation was thought through a little bit better. So yeah, a little bit more storage would be great with whatever vehicle I go to next. And the final thing is, I don't really need a small truck like I thought I would. Um, we do spend some time in Seattle. The roads are fairly, fairly narrow. Um, parking is pretty tight, uh, but we're probably there maybe once at most, maybe twice a month. And parking has never really been that bad. We also have a Miata, an older Miata, it's a 2006. So worst case, if we know we're going somewhere that's gonna be really crowded, like right into the middle of downtown Seattle, uh, we can take the Miata. Uh, that was the primary reason it drove me towards a smaller truck is I thought I'd be down there more often. Uh, and I'm just, I'm just not. So going forward, I'll probably just go for the larger truck just because I know it'll work for me. I mentioned before I had a smaller uh, Nissan, early uh, 90s Nissan. Uh, so I was a little bit worried about moving into a truck, so I didn't want to move into a full size when I bought the Ranger. Uh, and I'm glad I did that. I got a little bit more comfortable with driving a truck and driving a larger vehicle. And uh, at the end of the day, I feel more comfortable and I feel fully comfortable moving into a full size uh, at this point. So that's the last reason. If you don't need, um, if you live in the suburbs, you're not really driving downtown or anything, I don't think there's a huge advantage to going with a midsize, especially since uh, gas mileage isn't that much better. Of course, if you're big into off-roading, um, which I do do some very mild off-roading, a smaller truck is easier to maneuver around tight trails, uh, but I've never really pushed it to the point where I need like a, where I thought the truck was like any bigger, I couldn't get through a trail. So at least none of the trails I've been on. Um, I've seen full-size trucks, I've seen uh, forest service trucks, and those are usually like F-250s or F-150s. Um, and I've seen them around and it's never really been an issue for them to grow around the trails that I frequent. So in the end, I could just go with the full size. So those are the five reasons. Um, I have nothing against the Ranger. I actually do really like the Ranger. If you look at my previous videos, I've, uh, I was one of the first owners posting videos on YouTube and on social media about the Ranger. I think I might have had the, actually the first Ranger in Washington state. And overall, I've really liked the truck. And if I were to buy another midsize, I likely would uh, go for the Ranger again. Uh, the powertrain is awesome. It handles well. It does great off-roading. And I haven't had any uh, powertrain reliability issues. I've had minor things just with build quality and uh, the infotainment system. I, mean, I have a lot of videos on those things. Uh, but as far as like being reliable, the truck has always got me where I need to go. And um, I've overall been pretty satisfied with my purchase and I think it was a great truck for the time I had it in my uh, in my life. So I'm not to crap on the Ranger. It's a great truck. Um, and if I was like I said, if I was doing midsize, I would go with that one again. So make sure to like, subscribe. Uh, if you have any questions for me, make sure to add a comment below. Uh, if you keep tuned and you're subscribed, you'll see in a couple of weeks when I uh, move into that new vehicle what that is. So if you're interested in what I'm doing, and I'm gonna do a whole video on that why I chose that specific vehicle. Uh, make sure to like and subscribe. So thanks for watching. I uh, hope everyone is doing well and I'll see you out there.